We've looked at parabolas and ellipses. In a parabola, we had eccentricity was 1. That means that SP is equal to PN. It's the locus of all points where the distance from the focus is equal to the distance from the directrix. So that was E equals 1. For an ellipse, we had E was less than 1. So PS is E times PN smaller than PN, and we got an ellipse. What happens if we now consider E to be greater than 1? In this case, I've taken an eccentricity of 1.25, bigger than 1. This tells me that the distance from the focus to P must be one and a quarter times the distance from P to the directrix. I've taken a directrix at x equals 3.2 and a focus at x equals 5. Well, let's see what happens now if we move P around. This is constrained to keep that ratio at one and a quarter. And so you can see the sort of path that P is moving. Okay, let's put a trace on that so we can see what's happening. And now if we move it, we get a nice, happy looking curve. If we now think of P on the other side of the y-axis, then you can see that the distances are about right. PS is one and a quarter times PN. And if I now move P around on this, you can see that I get another part of the curve out here, always keeping that ratio at one and a quarter. So let's put a trace on that so that we can see where that's going. And if we trace that, we get now a shape which you're quite familiar with, the shape of a hyperbola. Just as in the case of the ellipse, we have lots of symmetry. The two curves here are symmetrical. So if we can draw everything from a focus at 5 and a directrix at 3.2, we should, by symmetry, be able to draw the same curve if we've got a focus at minus 5 and a directrix at minus 3.2. Well, here we have the curve. We've got our new focus at minus 5 and our new directrix at minus 3 over 2. Then we can see that if I move P as I did before, it actually stays exactly on that curve using the focus at minus 5 and the directrix at minus 2. The same would be true on the other side if I was to set everything up to do that. So now let's have a look at the full picture. Here you've got the hyperbola. The equation is actually x squared over 4 squared minus y squared over 3 squared is 1. Eccentricity 1.25. We've got two foci, two directrices, and I've added the two asymptotes. y is equal to plus or minus 3 times x over 4. Now let's look at the general case. Suppose we have a hyperbola with foci at plus or minus AE zero and directrices at X is plus or minus A over E. These are the same formulae as you would have for an ellipse, but with an ellipse, E would be less than one. For a hyperbola, E is bigger than one. And when E equals one for a parabola, you have foci at plus AE naught only, and a directrix only at x equals minus A. 
So PS equals EPN. If that's the case, we can square both sides and we will get that PS squared is E squared PN squared. PS, distance between two points. Looking over on the right hand side of the diagram, we've got P is XY, S is A over E naught. So PS squared is difference in the X coordinates, X minus AE squared plus Y minus zero squared is E squared times PN squared. Well, PN is X minus the X value there is A over E. So it's X minus A over E. So PN is X minus A over E, and we want PN squared. Little bit of algebra, X squared minus 2AEX plus A squared E squared plus Y squared is, let's multiply this out as we go, X squared times E squared minus 2A over E times E squared is 2AEX plus A squared over E squared times E squared is A squared. Let's bring over to this side the a squared. So I'm going to take the a squared, my e squared, subtract a squared. The 2ae x's disappear. Subtract x squared from each side, and you get x squared e squared minus x squared, and subtract y squared. Let's factorize. We get a squared e squared minus 1 is x squared e squared minus 1 minus y squared. Divide both sides by a squared e squared minus 1. The e squared minus 1 cancels. And we have y squared over a squared e squared minus 1. Let's put b squared equal to a squared e squared minus 1. Now I can do that. b squared is positive, e is bigger than 1, therefore e squared minus 1 is bigger than 0, and I can therefore put b squared equal to e squared minus 1. This gives us, writing the other way around, x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1, which is the standard equation of your ellipse. Uh, sorry, standard equation of the hyperbola. And in this case, the link between a b and e is that b squared is equal to a squared e squared minus 1. With an ellipse, the link was b squared equals a squared 1 minus e squared. So the only difference in the formula is that for a hyperbola, you've got e squared minus 1 because e is bigger than 1. And for an ellipse, you've got 1 minus e squared to keep it positive, e is less than 1. Let's use what we've just done to find the eccentricity, the foci, and the directory C's of the hyperbola x squared over 5 squared minus y squared over 12 squared is 1. Well, the important formula is b squared is a squared e squared minus 1. And in this case, we have that b is 12, that's 1, 4, 4. a is 5, that's 25 e squared minus 1. Multiplying out and adding 25, you get 169 is 25 e squared. Divide by 25, take the square root. Square root of 169 is 13. Square root of 25 is 5. And we only need the positive answer because e is greater than 1 and therefore obviously greater than 0. So now we have a is 5, 
E is 13 over 5, and therefore AE is 5 times 13 over 5 is 13. This tells us, therefore, that the foci are at plus or minus AE, which is why we did that, plus or minus 13, 0. And A over E is going to be 5 divided by 13 over 5, which is 25 over 13, therefore 13. Therefore, your directrices are x equals, there's two of them, plus or minus 25 over 13. Simple little question. Now, the parabola, the circle, the hyperbola, and the ellipse are all known as conic sections. Section meaning slice or cut. So if we move on, we find that if we look at a cone, for the purposes of this, we have to think of our cone as having a top as well as a bottom. If we slice across the cone and take the top piece off and look at the cut surface, we will see a circle. So you cut right through, take the top piece off, look at the surface that's left, you'll see a circle. If you cut at an angle, not too steep an angle, and take the top piece off, look at the cut surface, you will see an ellipse. If you now cut parallel to the edge of the cone, this goes on forever. Take the top piece off. The curve that you will then see will be a parabola. Now, the last bit is why we need the cone to have two pieces to it. Here, if we slice, we need the top part and the bottom part. And if you slice here and look at it, you will get the two branches of a hyperbola. So there is a hyperbola, and the other one, this is going to give you another hyperbola. So if you cut it to get two curves, there'll be a hyperbola. Special cut just parallel to the edge of the cone, a single infinite curve, parabola. Cut at an angle, ellipse, cut perpendicular to the line of symmetry, the axis of symmetry, and you get a circle.